Hi there. Morning, everyone. Wow, Hong Kong, US, Sydney, New York City. We've got everyone, my gosh, all over the world. That's amazing. Hello, Sue, 10 p.m. Perfect time to unwind before going to bed. Siska, good morning, Pagi. Hi, wow, Canada. Hi, Emily. <laughs> Aloha, I guess that's from Hawaii. And I think that's France. Oh my gosh, I think I should do this more often. Uh, I wasn't expecting this kind of uh, uh, diversity from Virginia, USA, more Australians. That's amazing. Thank you guys. I feel really blessed to have viewers from literally all over the world. This is amazing to connect everyone and to know that we share common interests. Uh, it's a wonderful feeling. And it's Sunday morning, so welcome everyone from, from Vegas, uh, Carolina, USA, Australia, Florida. I think the second Floridian today, Burbank, California. Wow, I'm humbled. Thank you so much for showing up. And the Philippines, of course. <laughs> Hi. Um, so just so you know, in the statistics of the channel, the number one uh, country is the US. I think number two is actually the Philippines. So you guys are are watching. Uh, thank you so much. And from Singapore as well, Loretta, Malaysia, Quebec, Osaka. Hi. <laughs> I'm actually editing videos for Osaka right now. I have on my personal channel, I released a Tokyo travel vlog and the Osaka video will be up soon if you want to see uh, my personal trip around Japan uh, because I, I did film uh, the Kunzo episodes when I was there uh, and that is only plant related. So for non-plant related, you can come and see my personal channel only, Sean. Um, Arizona, India, wow. Literally every major country has been represented here. This is amazing. This is so cool. Thank you. Oh, I'm, I'm like flabbergasted. I'm... I'm <laughs> From Maui, you're the second uh, Hawaiian, Arkansas. So El Salvador, wow, South America, you guys are very far away. Thank you, Sandy. <laughs> More Singaporeans, hello. I'm sorry if I missed out on anyone. I'm trying to greet, I'm trying to read and greet everyone uh, where possible. Um, I guess this is my first ever life doing it alone. And I think that maybe this is something that I should do more often, I guess. Uh, and yeah, it really brings a joy to, to, to connect all you guys here. And to thank you for spending your evening or morning here with me. Can you guys hear me well? I'm, I'm volume. The mic volume seemed to be quite low. But uh, I'm going to maybe take the next five minutes to open up the floor for any questions. I'll be reading the chat. So if you have any questions, I will try to answer them. And then we have a lot of plans to, to rescue. Look at all these under my table. Ah, I've got a lot of plans to save today. So it'll be a fun and interesting experience. It'll be quite casual. So uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for confirming the audio. Uh, so we'll be rescuing some plants today, rehabilitating, um, and then you guys can watch and kind of, I don't know, I won't be able to read much later while I'm rescuing the plants. I, I, the, the device will be a bit further away from me and I want to focus in on the plants, but I'll try to show you as much as possible. Feel free to leave if it's too late for you in the day. You can leave in the middle. Don't feel uh, obliged to stay all the way to the very end. I'm guessing it will be around 45 minutes, an hour long in total. Um, hi, more than green thumbs from Western Australia, 10 a.m. Oh, you guys are ahead in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Five Falcon asks, is this going to be uploaded? I think it will be. Uh, again, this is my first live. I think at the end of the episode, they will uh, ask me if I want to save this video and have it be uploaded as a normal episode. I think I'm going to be clicking yes, if that's an option. So you, some of you may be able to watch this at a, at a later time as well. But 7 p.m. in California. Wow, 10 p.m. Virginia. So I guess Virginia is Eastern Standard Time and California is PST, of course. Wow, more Western Australian, Paris. What is the best way to keep 100 house plants watered for a month? I can't leave water running because we have to turn off the water main. Okay, so Razia, Razia, sorry if I mispronounced your name. Uh, one thing that you can do to keep the, the plant water for a, a month is of course number one you can uh group them put them in a smaller room keep some light on but not a lot of light this way that they actually consume less water than they normally would and then the the, the idea is just to not have them grow but have them survive the one month ordeal so that's one way you can reduce their water intake you can put sit, sit them in a bowl of water but you want to keep some light and airflow on in the room or you can try to do the method where you uh, you have like a maybe like a, a bucket of water and you put strings out of the water and let the capillary action um, bring the water to the pot slowly. So the, the so you want one end of the string in the bucket and the other end of the string inside into a pot. And then uh, the plant will only take in what it needs slowly. So that is one way. But you might actually lose some plants. I mean, it, it sounds like a very stressful ordeal to have um, 100 house plants not water. Again, it depends on the species of the plant. So you have to accept that you might have some loss there and forgive yourself. Don't get hard, don't, don't be hard on yourself. Hi, nothing man. You're going to Bali next year. That's awesome. Bali is amazing. Wow. Uh, if you have any questions about Bali plants, you can DM me. I'll, I'll send you some resource there. Maybe some local guide uh, or yeah. 10 PM in North Carolina. Um, Delicia asks, how often do I water alocasias? I water them daily, actually, because alocasias, they like to be in constantly moist soil. But the, the key is that you need to give your alocasias a very, very airy potting mix, something very chunky. Like imagine a lot of perlite, a lot of pumice, uh, so that it actually drives, there's a lot of air movement within the, the potting media. Uh, and not have them compacted. That That's the best way to kill alocasia, is to have them compacted in water. But I water them every day, and they get excellent light, they get excellent airflow, and they really seem to thrive. If you your if your potting mix is more dense, don't water your alocasia every day. Um, water it when it's like almost, I wouldn't let it go bone dry, but almost bone dry, yeah. Yeah, Ligia said, uh, replied the same way, the drip watering with, with water bottle. I guess that means that you you put it in the water bottle and you just yeah, there's a contraption that lets you slowly release the 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 water into the potting medium. That's one way that you can also prolong uh, the life. Um, yeah, I'm just starting to like canna lilies. I think I have one canna lily as, as well. Cleopatra and Stuttgart. Um, nothing, man. My Instagram is on my. In, in the each video description, in the bottom of the video description, my Instagram account is there. It's hard to spell it out. Uh, you know what? I'm going to type it out right now while I'm still here. This is my Instagram account. Hello from Manila. Hello, Masai. Uh, 10606 in the Philippines. Uh, I'll be coming to the Philippines next year. Uh, there is going to be a planned event. They have invited me. I think it's also organized by the Ministry uh, of Agriculture or some, some government body. They have already invited me. So I'll be coming to Manila if nothing um, changes, of course, uh, next year. Did you ever uh, successfully propagate Monstera adansonii? Yes, of course. I have a video on Monstera adansonii. And just if I know that some of you are new to the channel, but I have been around for four months, uh, for four years. <laughs> It's early in the day. For four years, uh, I literally have a video on anything. So if you want to type in only plants in the search uh, YouTube search, but only plants for an Adansonii, you can definitely find something on the Adansonii. There are a specific species or a specific topic. Just type in only plants 
and then that topic that you want. Uh, it's usually uh, been covered before in the channel. So, and uh, I think the Monster Edinsonia one was a pretty fun episode, actually. Uh, Jesse, Jesse Jard asked if I, I have any of the colored bamboo types. Unfortunately, no. Bamboos are the fastest growing plants in the world. They grow really fast. And as you can see, I don't really have much room for them. So I have not had the chance. I am going to... Hi, wow, India, more from Canada. And uh, wow, a lot of Canadians up here today. What do you think of self-watering pots? I only have one with cotton wick. I find that plants only absorb what it needs. Um, I think self-watering pot is great. Uh, some species may not do so well with it, so it really depends. Uh, the thing with, with transitioning a plant from a regular pot to like a self-watering pot is that you might expect a level of stress from the adaptation. If you are want, wanting to do self-watering, I actually recommend to take cuttings from the original plant and propagate it in the self-watering contraption and let it adapt right from the get-go. This will set them up for success and also you end up with two plants. Uh, but self-watering is okay. But for me, I'm somebody who loves watering plants. I love, love, love drowning my plants in water. So self-watering would defeat that purpose. Uh, Costa Rica, hello. It's variegated sodoroy, I think. Justin, yes. Um, I've seen variegated sodoroy, like the real ones on Instagram before. I don't know where or, or when, but a lot of them that are sold in the market today are actually the uh, virus or mosaic. They're, they're a problem from tissue culture and those usually won't survive long. I'm looking at mine. I'm trying to find, I bought one more. Yeah, so I'm gonna quickly show you guys. I bought one more Soderoy here, and it is a bit of a, it's, it's a bit thick as well, as, as I mentioned before. I don't know if you can see this little dot here. There's some bit of like variegation. So I, I bought this plant and it wasn't variegated, but then it started to show signs of that virus and that variegation, and it just hasn't grown much for me. So I think that plant is on the way to uh it's not going to make it i'm pretty sure if you wait a bit longer the yeah uh, costa rica can i put monstera's aerial roots into soil when i repot the plant oh absolutely you should when you have a monstera or any aeroid and you have the aerial roots come out from the higher higher branches you you can actually guide them towards the pot and they will do so well and is it safe to take orchid to take orchid bark that's been sitting outside i'm scared that uh, I would not take media, hang on, I, I don't know what you mean by that. Does it mean that the orchid bark has been sitting, it's been a potting media for the orchid and you just wanted to bring it inside? I don't know, I don't understand the question, but um, have you ever had the idea to come to Western Australia? I would, I think I might do an Australian tour, but I don't know when. Uh, there are a lot of tissue culture plants coming from China. Yes, Jackal, um, China is the hub for, for tissue culture. And I will have some China episodes coming. It, I think it's January or February next year. China's botanical um, industry is crazy. And it's so disconnected from the rest of the world because they don't do social medias. So I did went to their botanic gardens, which I... Honestly, spoiler here in, in Shanghai, the, it's the best botanic gardens in the world. And yet nobody ever vlog about it. No, no one's talked about it. Um, but I have filmed an episode there. So you will see firsthand what that botanic garden looks like. It's amazing. Um, I've seen the sodorates around. Let me see. Thank you, Nothing Man. Uh, if you come to Perth, yeah. Thank you. I think I will... Uh, it's past 15 minutes, so I, I don't have too much time now, but I think a lot of you guys came here to, to watch some rescue. And I also am waiting to rescue all these plants because uh, I've been waiting a week. I've just been staring at them. They're slowly dying and I'm just going to get to it. And then we're going to run this for about 45 minutes until like the one hour clock has passed so that you guys don't feel overwhelmed with the content. So I'll try to rescue as much as possible and I'll choose a diversity uh, so, I, so we can cover different topics today, and I guess let's let's get started. 
uh, somebody's asked, have I, I've never been to the Cincinnati Botanic Gardens. Unfortunately, uh, I would love to Cincinnati, Ohio. If I ever go to Ohio, I would love to go to uh, Cedar, po Cedar Point, the, the theme park. It's like on my wish list. But um, what do you think of the Indian Ropoy? I think that's a Hoya Carnosa Compacta. That's amazing. I love it. I have one, but it's so slow. But I'm going to start um, rescuing the plants. As you can see here, I have prepared, done my homework. So we're going to be saving some plants today. I hope you don't mind. I know there are questions rolling in the in the chat, but uh, I'm going to be eyes on. Uh, somebody asked if I can do a tour. I can't. Uh, today's today's episode, we're going to be rescuing plants, but I might do a tour uh, episode soon. So yeah, somebody said begonia rescue. So I guess let's start with some begonias. This one, I actually have a video on this. This is the black velvet, black mamba. I, I really can't remember the name, but it's really not doing quite well. So what I'm going to do is, it's already got multiple vines in there actually. And some of them have rotted off. So I, I gotta take take this off. Yeah, this is this is no good. Now for this particular begonia, you wanna find a healthy leaf. They normally can get bigger than this, by the way, the leaf. So this is not doing so well. Take off a leaf, like just this length. And then I've done a bit of cheating. I've, I've got a water vessel here. So I'm, I'm gonna just do a water propagation for this. This is the easiest, but you can absolutely do, uh, put them directly into soil for these guys. Look at how beautiful this is. It's pretty. I might do one where I lay it directly on a surface. It's a little bit nerve-wracking to do this live. So uh, this, this is a bit of moss, sphagnum moss, good old moss here. And then with this begonias, you can nick the, the veins. I'm gonna do it gently. See, do you see that little bit of injury that I put all, along this vein here? You wanna nick it a little bit at the end. I don't know if you can see that line that I did. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is cut this patio even shorter. So when you put this directly on a potting media, the baby can come out from the place where you made a nick on the veins. And also the babies can come from the base of the leaf right here. So I'm gonna do that. And also learning from previous mistakes with begonias, you absolutely need to tend it. So I'm gonna take like a, and make sure that the, the surface are all gently in contact with the moist media and you don't wanna keep it too wet. If the media is too wet, it can rot. Uh, and if the media is too dry, this will dry off and die completely. In my experience, the best way to propagate begonia is to, to cover it. So you wanna tend the humidity in there so there's, there's not a lot of water loss from the environment. So yeah. So with this begonia, I'm gonna do two ways. And this is the sad part. I'm not really going to be uh, saving much of this and new growth come out from the base. That's great, but I'm not counting counting for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to propagate this in water and in the moss and get a few plants out of this. Instead of one ugly plant, I'll end up having a few beautiful ones. Now, when you propagate this in water, the roots will appear in the bottom and the babies will also appear at the bottom. So when the roots appear, you want to plant this, but you do not want to plant it too deep because the babies will smother the babies need a place to come out and breathe. So just keep keep in mind of that when you're propagating these begonias. One more, just three. So I will not keep a long stem as well. The longer the stem, the more um, a water loss there is between the top and the base of the leaves. So you want to keep them a moderate, moderate amount, and that's that's there. This.
Next up, okay, this is done. I've got another begonia. This one, I don't know if you remember in my previous video, this has been a massive part of begonias and it's just not doing well. I'm not even gonna check the roots because this came with the original potting media from years ago. And begonias, they hate, they hate to be repotted. Their roots are like super fine, super delicate. For begonias, I believe in propagation rather than repotting. But unless you're just upsizing the pot, then that's sure. You can dis you can minimally disturb the roots. Uh, you can just move them to a slightly bigger pot. But yeah, I'm gonna cut this leaf off. And I'm gonna make those sliced, sliced in the veins again. I'm gonna show you a close up later on. And this is where their babies can come from. I don't know if you see the, the little cuts that I made along the veins. Um, yeah. And I'm gonna get, I'm gonna put this in a Tupperware actually. Bit of moss. For those of you just joining, hello. Sorry, I can't greet you properly. You're a bit far away, so I can't really see uh, see the screen. I might even cut this a little bit shorter and gently lay it in there. Make sure that the cut ends are touching the moss. Now, this sphagnum moss is already slightly moist and there's that i'm just gonna leave that in there i might not even water this i'll check the way that you know is that the the water droplets are going to form around the the container that's when you know humidity has reached almost 100 percent, maybe 99 percent. but at the same time you want to monitor the moss you don't want it wet you want the moss to be like semi-dry uh, and loose and airy uh, so you kind of moderate, and I don't think this plant will need much water moving forward, but it may need to top up a little bit at some point. But just keep an eye out for it. So this is this is one. I might also do. Let's see, this leaf is doing okay. I'm basically taking off all the all the good leaves. I'm gonna take this one leaf, and then I'm gonna be propagating this in water. You know what? I'm gonna do another one maybe. Water propagation is always like the safe place safe way to to propagate begonias so now i've got two begonias down now i have a feeling that we should probably do something else and i want to show you something interesting i don't know if you can guess i'm going to give you like 10 seconds to guess what this is uh hint i've been propagating this for about two two and a half years and it's been just like this. It's been kept in medium light right next to my office. I, if you watch my all my plant tour video, I definitely covered this plant. Um, but the problem, the reason why we're doing this now is because it hasn't grown at all in two years, which is a long time. So either it's not getting enough light or there's some kind of pest in the soil or whatever, and we're gonna find out. So this is, by the way, it's a variegated ZZ plant. Yay, the baby ZZ plants. Okay, let me uh, unpot it. I'm guessing we're gonna find mealybugs in there. And also this is, uh, the soil is getting a bit compacted in there. So I'm gonna slowly, slowly dig it out, very gently. Oh, cute, cute. Oh my God, cute. Okay, so diagnosis has come in i am seeing a lot of these this is uh you see that this is cute this is a baby i see a lot of dead roots on the underside of the pot so either it was overwatered or and then rotted off or it has um dried off completely maybe only the top has been watered throughout but the bottom stayed too dry so the roots in the bottom has died off but I'm, uh, this one is died this is a goner this is like this used to be like uh, like almost like a potato. So sometimes we forget that these guys are the ZZ plants. They're actually codiciforms. Look at that. They have a cute base. 
And what I want to do next is I want to take off the, the dead roots. There's quite a lot, actually. I see some live roots, fortunately, so that's okay. It's a good thing that we unpotted it today so we can see how it's doing. But the care for ZZ plant, in even the, the variegated one, because I have one that's uh, living outside in full sun. They love, they love full sun, these guys. Um, the, the brighter, the faster they will grow, the more vibrant the variegation will get. Yeah, I'm trying to take off the, the dead roots. It's actually very nerve wracking to do this live because like, I don't know how many people are watching now. It doesn't show, I don't know how many of you there are now, but it's a bit nerve wracking. So let me give you a close up. This is what it looks like. This is, we've got twinsies too. So we've got two, we've got one bear, one bear, but I'm guessing that this point here, this might be the growth point. That would make sense. So this has a lot of potential. Look at all these stored up uh, plant material in here. This one wants to live. So yeah. Oh, I found one more, one more in here. There you go. Uh, let me see. If you gently tug at the roots and they come off, the roots are gone. It's mush. This one barely has any roots. So I, I don't know if this is under or over watered. It's hard to tell, but I'm going to adjust the care. So yeah, no more. That's all like, that's all gone. Now let me find the trash. Let me find the trash. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to get rid of all these old, and by the way, this, this potting media is also like super old. It's been like, I don't know, like two, three years old. So it's good to update it, to give it a, a change. So I have fresh potting media here. And just so you know, uh, a lot of you guys are wondering, this is uh, sort of my new potting mix that I use. It's my new general potting mix because of my space constraint. I live, I live in a small house in a small garden now. So I don't have room for five different types of potting mix anymore. So I just make one that's like good for everyone. It's rice hull, burnt rice hull, perlite, uh, uh, give me a second, pumice, worm casting, and what else do I have in there? I think that's pretty much it. And it's very uh, draining and uh, it's, it's very chunky, dries fast. This is why I water my plants every day because I give them very, very chunky type potting mix. This is almost like a succulent potting mix. For plants that are more water loving, I amend them with more cocoa peat or I amend them with some uh, like soil, like regular clay garden soil. If you amend them, uh, they will retain more water. But for this guys, obviously I'm giving it a terracotta pot and this very loose potting media and I expect to water this almost every day. So I might actually only put like two in here. Or do I wanna put all of them in? You know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put all of them in, in, in this pot. Uh, so it's going to be quite the party in there, if you know what I mean. Because I've got no space. I don't want five different pots of this. And also, I have the adult of this. It's doing really well. The adult uh, ZZ plant that's variegated. It's actually beautiful. It's, one of my, it's become one of my favorite plants now. It really burst into life the minute I put it out into full sun. They started putting out really nice variegated leaves and they started growing quite fast. So light is one of the ways to go with these guys. All right. And some cases, people actually do leave some of the, the, the little tuber, the little codex out and you can. But if you bury them in, they will 
turn into uh, they'll give you more roots and, and things like that so and one one more thing i want to remind everyone is that these guys are aeroids so yeah all right that's done shall we do do, 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 do. Shall we do a skindapsis? This is actually in trouble. I've had it. Uh, the the main plant was sitting above soil because the soil has been like washed out or like compacted. So for the longest time, this plant was not living even in the soil. It was like above it. I don't know if you know what I mean. So what I did was I put this. By the way, this is a skindapsis tricolor. It's got three colors on it. I don't know if you can see that well on the camera. It's actually beautiful. So other than the regular skin depths, you'll see bits, flecks of like light green on them. Uh, I don't know if you can see them well. The camera might not show them so well. But this is tricolor and it is beautiful. Uh, so what I did was I put them in a prop box, just completely in a prop box. And look at all these roots. Every single, every single node has come out with aerial roots and they are beautiful. They're fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy roots. So this was living in like almost 100% humidity the whole way. Um, and now the leaves have perked up. Before the leaves were like completely limp. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to be putting it, propagating it. Uh, a bit more. Sphagnum moss. Don't put too much. I just want a little bit. I just want roots to, to grow into them. My secret sauce. Because it already has roots, I am going to add a little bit of nutrients in there. And keep in mind, for slow-release fertilizers like this, and I will repeat this often, they're supposed to go through dry and wet cycles. It only releases nutrients when it is moist and in contact with the media. However, in this case, the media is constantly moist. This means that I do not want to add a lot. I want to add only a little bit as it is continuously releasing, um, releasing nutrients because it's perpetually wet in here. So I don't know if I'm making sense, but this is just um, a bit of common sense here. So this is the tippy top cutting, get the cute little aerial root. What I'm gonna do is just gently bury the, the bit of aerial root in the, in, the, in the contraption here. And this one as well, I'm just gonna do single node cuttings. And this one, this is interesting. As you can see here, this is a, a node actually. And if I peel this open, there should be a growing eye inside. So there's a potential for uh, life to come out of this. But because it doesn't have any of these leaves that will give it um, energy, I'm just gonna keep it as a two uh, node cutting in this case. So it has two potential to put out, put out baby, babies from it. I don't know about you guys. I um, I might read the chat later. I think I should be able to read it later after I'm done. Uh, so do comment down below. But I'm having a blast. I don't know if you guys are. This is interesting because I, I'm feeling productive at the same time. I know that I'm spending time with you guys. I know I'm not interacting as much right now. I can't. Obviously, I, I've only got two hands. Uh, but I'm, I'm really having a, a blast here. This is this is like multitasking and also doing something, but you know, not, not fully alone. This one's interesting. Uh, so this one node here has already put out a vine. So this is the vine. So you don't want to cut this node. If you cut this off, this is done because it's already spent its node to put out this one vine. But what I can do is I can, the vine has more than one leaf. I could cut, you know, I'm not going to be greedy. I'm just going to keep it as, as it is, this whole thing. And this one, I might grow it in another 
contraption. I really like this. By the way, this is from a drink. I got this from a um, like a drink stand in a market, and it came with a lid. So this is perfect. Guys, I'm going to show you how, what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to invert it, basically. So don't throw away all like your drinks. This is also from like bubble tea. You can either propagate things in your bubble tea cup like this, or hang on, let me show you. Or you can use this to tent a pot. You can like seal the humidity in a pot. So there's two ways you can use this. So do not throw. I mean, I might do an episode or a, or a YouTube shorts or reels about how to reuse this. But don't throw them away. I mean, this is, these are going to the landfill. And as much as we like to believe that they are being recycled, most of them are not. There's no way for us to, to, to recycle these in a meaningful way. So the, the best way to reuse this is to upcycle it. Um, and of course, some may argue that the best way is not to, not to use them at all. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, and I, I'm going to add a bit of pesticide as well, just to make sure that there's nothing living on, on these. Uh, plants. All right. So I might keep this very funky plant inside a jar. This is like the VIP, the VIP area here. Bury the notes a little bit more. Okay. I invert. This is not, not as easy as it, <laughs> as it looks. Okay. Ta -da! There you go. I really think this is gonna be so happy. This is like the one VIP room for the for the plant. It's getting light, it's getting humidity, it's getting some nutrients now finally. So that's amazing. And I tried to tuck the roots in, as you can see, uh, tuck it gently into the, the the plant. So hey, got a few more. Let me find. Yeah, this main plant is looking so sad. It's not happy at all. Yeah, this whole vine is not happy. Let me see. Let me try to find happy ones. I, I want to prioritize the, the vines that are doing well. Because we can't, in this case, we cannot really save everybody we, as, as much as we want to. We can't. We got to be selective. Now, I am going to be selecting this later, but I know that this is running a bit long, so I'm going to do it after. But I think you get the point. Uh, you want to uh, cut the single nodes, tuck in the aerial roots, and then you want to close it. And for those of you who just came in, I basically put this entire plant into 100% humidity. That's why all the nodes here, these are all roots, the nodes here have activated roots. So this is a pre-preparation for propagation and it ensures ooh, it ensures nearly 100% success rate. I'll work on that later. Okay, this we took this out of its cup earlier. Um, normally I would wait a little bit longer, but this has this aglonema, this is beautiful by the way. I rotted the whole bunch off. This was like a whole pot of lush, beautiful aglonema, and I overwatered it again. So I know if you um, Somebody said, am I blind? Is it imbricata? I don't see an imbricata here. Is it Dishkidia imbricata or? Yeah, there's no imbricata in the, in this, in this scene right now. <laughs> but I always, 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 always overwater my aglonemas and I always start them over. I've got about six or seven of these. These are the top cuttings. And as you can see, the new growth has come out here. Uh, so this is the first set of roots. You see that it's thick. Aglonemas, they hate, hate water. When you see thick roots like this, um, anthuriums also have this kind of thick roots and they're so beautiful. It's like fuzzy, fuzzy. Uh, you might want to wait for the secondary roots to come up before you pop them up. Uh, because the first root, this is, the, this is what I call the first root they come out, is going to be anchoring the plant for the most part. 
And the secondary roots that will come out of this eventually are the ones that will uh, essentially uptake nutrients and water into the plant. So this is technically speaking not ready yet, but it's been forever. I've been looking at this for like five or six weeks. So I'm just going to put one uh, in soil now and uh, the rest are still going to be in water. So I'll have different stages of this plant uh, around the house. Because I'm such an avid overwaterer, I'm going to give this terracotta pot. It's, it's much better for aglonemas to be underwatered than to overwater them. Well, you know what? Hang on. I did prepare something else. Sorry, not this. I've got something better. One, this is smaller in size. Number two, it's clear. Sorry, I prepared this for this plant exactly. Or look at how well it fits in here. Look at look, it's so sexy. It's like almost naked in there. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> and when you do this, the you can actually monitor the water well better because you can easily see when it's moist or when it's dry when you have a, a translucent pot like this. So yeah, this aglonemas, when we, when we buy aglonemas, they come in a tiny little sad little thing like this. And again, if you grow them for years, they will have a lot of, lot of babies come out. Imagine like, like a whole like massive pot of this, which I had before. I think it was, was it in, I think it was in all my plants tour. It was there. Um, but I think it's already looking a little bit sad in that video. So there's that. Give it, um, because it already has roots, I'm going to give it a bit of fertilizer. I eyeball it. I never measure. Some of you guys ask, how much do you put? Um, use your feelings. I mean, it depends on the pot size, depends on the species of the plant, whether they are heavy feeders or not. But this is done. Next. I want to do a plant that I wasn't sure would propagate in water. And look at this. This is how murky I let my water go. This is the Lea Cochiana burgundy. It is a beautiful plant. It's almost black normally. Sorry about these yellow wing leaves. But it is a beautiful plant. It's in the Lea genus. So I don't know if you can see here. I'm going to take this off. The little baby uh, baby leaf has already emerged on, on top. So for, um, this will probably have to come off at some point. Yeah, this I'm going to remove this at some point. It might still be photosynthesizing for now, but it's already put out roots. So apparently for this plant, you can propagate in water. So I'm going to stick that in, in here. And this is another cutting. Look at the, the roots here. How cute. Uh, yeah. Put this in uh, the pot. Uh, this is a, a good cutting to show you. This is a new vine. Look at how beautiful. You see the underside? Ah, there you go. Now you can see the beauty of this plant. Uh, yeah. And this is a plant that actually likes very bright filtered shade. They can take a little bit of direct sunlight, but the leaves will not be so dark in direct sunlight. But this is, this is beautiful, actually. This is why I wanted to propagate it so that I... I don't lose that main plant. This one has put out like um, roots and this is the main stem. And I think we haven't seen any baby leaf, but the baby leaf would come out from this main stem over here. Let me check. Yeah, it hasn't, but it will at some point. So I'm going to plant this this way because the baby leaves are going to emerge. Is that one? I don't know. This might be, I don't know if you see this point here. This might be the baby. Like this little, I don't want to touch it because I don't want to knock it off. This is another one. Now, this one I'm actually a little bit worried about. We'll find out because it does. It, it wasn't propagated from the main stem. As you can see, this was cut in the middle. So it's put out roots, but I don't know if it has any meristem um, or any part that will let it produce new leaves. Because we're the next, even though it rooted, we still need to figure out whether it, it will put out a vine or not. So I'm not sure about this one. I'm really not. But we will find out. But as you can see, for like the one that we showed earlier with the main stem part, uh, babies have emerged like this one here. So it might be wiser to do a plants with main stem in this case. But always uh, experiment. You'll never know, right? You never know. 
until you do. There you go, done. A, a bit of fertilizer. I see some questions there, but I'm sorry I couldn't get to them because I hands are quite full at the moment. Oh, and after water propagation, I'm not going to do it now because I don't want to get the table wet, but you really want to uh, use this to water the plant um, because this water, while it, as disgusting as it looks, has the right amount of natural rooting hormone. It has the right amount of, um, it has the right pH value and all the good stuff that this plant is already used to. So this is helping it acclimatize to the outside water, if you know what I mean. So yeah, I will do it later outside. Uh, next thing I'm going to do, this is going to be fairly simple. This is a cute Peperomia polybotria or the raindrop Peperomia. It was struggling so hard. Uh, and then I figured out to give it what it needs. And what Peperomia wants, uh, high humidity or relatively uh, good humidity, but they can take low humidity. They have very succulent leaves, so they can take lower humidity. But the problem is that they don't like heat. Like in my garden here, it's very hot. So I moved it up to my office upstairs where there's uh, air conditioning on in the daytime. Loving it. It's like, look at that. It's like coming back to life. This was so sad before. You have no idea. And what I'm going to do with this one is, of course, I'm going to propagate, propagate the way. And when you cut it, like right here, this is where I made the cut, new vines will start to appear in the bottom. I'm sure I've repeated this many times in the channel before, but plants, they love to be beheaded like this. And the top part, I can either stick it back in here or I can just start a new pot, which I will do. This is my last remaining plant, so I really want to make sure that I, I have it. And also they do well with water, by the way. Peperomias do extremely well in water propagation. In fact, I don't know if that's what I want to do. Um, I can turn this into two. Two cuttings. Absolutely. Ah, I dropped it. Hang on. And as usual, uh, too many leaves. Too many leaves. They're going to die if you leave it as it is. So I'm going to cut the lower leaf off. And then I'm going to stick this. I don't know, man. I might even take one more leaf off. If I have two leaves like this, I would leave it in water only because the water can support both leaves. But if I put both of them in here in, in just like potting media, which they can, they might die off. So you know what? I might actually, I might actually just propagate this in water. I'm going to stick these two in water because I want to keep both leaves. So keep in mind, if you want to do soil propagation less leaves because they're drawing less moisture from the soil than they are in water. And leaves, they need water to survive like it or not so when you have a cutting like this the leaf is producing the, the cutting is producing new leaves and it's also producing new roots and it's also producing new shoots three at the same time so it is very very tiring process so this will go in water uh later and back to our pro oh and by the way with peperomias you can you can maybe you know what for this one since i have it ready you can propagate just by the, the petiole here. You don't need the main stem. You can. In fact, you can probably even cut the leaf in half and stick it. And you can get both to root and shoot. Look at that. Cute. Yeah. So this is done. Keep it lightly moist. Keep it in the same room, I would say, as its parent plants. So that's done. And another plant that I'm going to do, running out of time here, is this one, the Dioscoria discolor. It's actually really pretty, and I've got prettier specimens all over the garden, but this is a vine that is like uh, all the way up on my balcony. It clambered all the way up, and water and nutrients is taking all this time to get up there, so I knew that it might not do so well in the long run. 
And that is why I put, I took single note. I have a video on this, by the way, the Dioscorea discolor is a beautiful, beautiful plant. It used to be very expensive and now it's become very cheap, very, very cheap in Indonesia. Maybe you can see, this is what the new leaf look like. How beautiful, the, the one that's emerging. So while in propagation, it put out roots and it's put out leaves. Um, if you want to watch that video to see how it's done, you can. But this is the second batch. I got so many babies out of that, uh, that first video that uh, I don't know what to do with them. So I'm going to just pop this whole thing into one. And they, they are moisture loving. Uh, Dioscorea, they are actually in the yam family. I believe they form like a codex inside the pot. I've not really grown mine that... Actually, I might. I might have... I, the, it has an adult plant over there. It might have already formed the, the yam in there. It might. I'm going to uh, probably unpot it at some point to show you what it looks like. But this is in my fantastic foliage plants. So if you want to see that video, just type in fantastic foliage um, by only plants and you'll see this. Done. Just give it, I know this looks sad now, but look at the babies, they're doing well. I'm gonna give it some time. And again, um, this water, use it wisely. Water the plant with it later. I don't want the table to get wet for now, but water with the same um, water that you propagate with. And this is the, again, the slow, uh, slow release pesticide. Be careful with this stuff. Don't touch it with your hands. And if you ask me, the Oscorias, they are quite heavy feeders. It's just my feeling, my instinct, and also a bit of experience. So there's that. I think we've got like nine more minutes. So I'm going to do this. This is my struggle plan. My gosh, I don't know if you can guess what this is. This is the uh, Stromanthi Triostar. It's, I think one of the problem with this plant is that it is in an old, old potting mix and it was inconsistently watered. Look at all these dried leaves here. It was inconsistently watered for a very long time. Uh, it might have dried off for too long. And it likes very bright light, very, very bright light. But it is doing OK. I, I, I started keeping an eye out from, um, back from my travels. And it's already put out a new uh, happy vine here. So this is going to make it, it's going to survive. But I think it, I need to release it from its old potting media. It's very, very old. I've not repotted this in a very long time. And this is a plant that really don't appreciate repotting as well. So I might have a bit of um, complaints from the plant right after this. So yeah, I'm going to put it back into its original pot here. And I think, yeah, this media is like super old. So that's done. I think it's a good idea to re replenish, to change. Oh, I, I found another one. I, I th almost threw this away. This is from that Dioscoria before, but look at the dried leaf. I thought it's dead and it's got a baby coming out. So this is alive. This one is alive. I'm going to keep it together with the, the other plant. Stick it right in. Stick it right in there. This, this guy wants to live, so I'm going to give it a chance. And for this, I would definitely need to repot this uh, in like two or three months because there's so many cuttings in here that the roots will take over really, really fast. And then this one, I'm going to give it the potting mix again. And this time I'm centering it because just now the plant was like growing a little bit off to the side. So I want it to be centered in the pot. These guys, I water it lightly every day. They don't want to dry out completely, but they can be overwatered. These guys, if they overwater, they will, the leaves will start uh, rotting. So there's that. Okay. And this is very pest prone. It's very spider mites prone. So I'm going to give it pesticide. And also they love airflow. If you grow them somewhere hot, humid with no airflow, oh, these guys are not going to make it. If you think about these guys, it like think of like Hawaii, like Hawaiian landscapes. You know, you have like your breeze uh, or Bali. Think of that kind of like 
uh, tropical landscape where it's like bright but shaded and there's always like these beautiful tropical winds blowing it's hot but it's not like like jakarta hot it's not like city hot that's what they like so okay da, 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 da. let's do a rare plant let's do a rare one this time this can anyone guess what this is can anyone guess i don't know i will read the chat later but this is a philodendron patricia so they can get really big and it's actually my struggle plant i had this from equigenera and i've got another vine that it, because it's doing so badly that the main plant died it started putting out two vines instead of one and i overwatered it i overwatered it so it rotted and i have i still have both but this is only one of them as you can see the roots look at all these roots it's ready it's telling me that it's ready and because i was afraid that it will get overwatered again i'm going to be putting this in terracotta pot this time i'm really really i cannot be trusted with watering plants because again i am a heavy hand heavy handed water so i'm going to do this and because it's so deep in the pot i'm only going to fill up um, halfway through the pot for this plant and pardon me for a second i'm going to get a bit of cocoa chips over there Okay. Uh. Yeah. All right, these are like PR cocoa chips. So what I do with this is I get my my handy potting mix here and I mix it. I mix it with the cocoa chip. So this is like a soil amendment because the cocoa chip will allow more air movement. It will dry out a lot faster. I should have cleared out the previous panels. Sorry, it's a bit messy here. Um, yeah, so mix it in, mix it in. I might even have, yeah, down here. I've got some charcoal bits as well. This is uh, from for orchid, uh, orchid mix. And I just mix it together. So I will, this will give me less opportunity to overwater it. And also that chunkiness. Remember the aeroids love, especially climbing aeroids like this, they love chunky, chunky potting mix. They like to be fooled into thinking that they are climbing up the wall. This is when they can produce spectacular and mature leaves. It's when they believe that they're climbing. If they are in like compacted soil or if they're in water, they will put out small leaves because they will, they're like, oh, why would we want to invest in putting out big leaves if, if we're just gonna like hang out and, and be suffering in this low um, lati latitude? Is that what it is? Like low height. So yeah, so we're kind of fooling them right now. And here's the thing, I'm gonna fertilize this. Look at how beautiful this is. They can get large. The leaves can get really big. So this is still a baby. Um, with terracotta pots, you definitely want to fertilize more. Why? Because, believe it or not, the terracotta pot will absorb water. And guess what will be in that water? It will be the fertilizer. So the fertilizer can also be wicked away by the, the terracotta pots. And they will absorb the nutrients as well. So it just kind of fertilize them a bit more. So these are tips that I've never mentioned before in my long form videos. And now you hear it. And of course, this is that water that I'm going to do it from actually, I'm going to water it like all the way back here. Use the same water, they love it, and water this plant. And thoroughly, because imagine that this used to be in water, you don't want to let this dry out. Um, you want to really, uh, for, for the next week or so, drown this in water and then slowly back away with watering until it can um, dry out completely. Because these guys, philodendrons, they need to dry out absolutely completely between watering. I'm going to do one. We have two more minutes. I'm going to do one last plant. This is the dwarf's peace lily with a silver stripe down the middle. Although I don't know why the silver stripe is not showing 
love this green too much. It is beautiful. It's gonna put out tiny piece lily flowers. And this one, I think, yeah, this is dead. It's got, an, oh, sorry, it's not dead. I don't know if you can see. There is a, oh God, it's super messy. Hang on, let me shake some. This one vine, it's supposed to be dead, but it's got a little baby. I don't know if you can see it on the side there. That's the baby. It wants to live. So what I'm going to do, you know what? I'm going to help this baby along. The best way is to cut off the top of the of this. You could probably propagate this, actually. You could. I mean, just stick it in soil and something might come out. But the chances are negligible. It's very, very small chance. Um, this has been struggling for a while. And I don't remember ever repotting this plant before. I think it's overwatered. It's actually wet, and I, 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 I didn't water this yesterday. It is very wet. Yeah, it's mush. It's mush. You can feel like when the soil is wet after you haven't watered it. Um, and I plan to water today, but I have not. I have not watered my garden today, by the way, and it's still wet. So this is uh, severely overwatered, and the roots have largely rotted. Although I see a lot of healthy roots still, but a lot of them are mush. So I'm glad we did this today. I'm looking around trying to find a terracotta pot because it is my literally my answer to most of the things. Yeah, and and the the, the soil here is not mine. The the soil is in very really deep inside the plant. That is a kind of I think the original potting mix, which is due for um, a repotting. I think this is maybe three or four years old plant. It I think it was. So it is literally time to repot, give it something fresh. But they really flower beautifully, like these tiny, tiny peace lily flowers. Um, yeah, so this is what it looks like after I have, uh, yeah, beautiful, healthy roots. And all these are, are like dead roots. So I'm gonna, give me like 30 seconds. I'm gonna climb <laughs> over some things to find a, a pot. Never mind, I found one right there. Okay, I have way too many. I have pots just like lying around everywhere in the house. And uh, this is actually slightly big. Hang on. Uh, it's the same size. Okay, I'm just gonna use this. Okay. And actually, I like to do these things with my girls who take care of the plants. I like to do it together with them because we learn so much. When we, when we take off the media, we learn what we did wrong and we know what to do later on. So, but today, of course, they are not here. So only I know, only we know. It's our little secret. We know what's, what's, what's going on with these plants. I'm going to use only a little bit off media because I don't want to risk another bout of overwatering. I might only keep it like half potted up. All right. There's that. Peace Lily. Silver stripes or mini, I, don't, I forgot the name. I've got some more plants on the table, but I really don't want to impose too much of your time. I think I'm going to finish them on my own. So let me get my laptop. Let me get, uh, let me see if I can. Hello, somebody just arrived. Hello. Uh, yeah, I, let me try to read. I try to spell the file. Silver streak, that's what it is. Thank you, G, for saying, uh, for writing this. It's a Spatiphyllum silver streak, and it's finicky, and I don't know what it likes, what it doesn't like. It's, you're right, it's not easy. I've got other peace lilies in my collection, and they really just take off. They don't, you don't need to do anything, but these guys, they are a little bit, 
yeah, they're a little bit harder, but you can. I have actually successfully rehabbed this once without repotting. I basically kept an eye out for it and it grew many clumps and then it started putting out these flowers and then I overwatered it. And uh, as you can see, it rotted again. So yeah, I think we are past the one hour mark. Um, really thank you for, for watching this. I don't know. I, I wish I can see how many of you there are and uh, it's not showing it's not showing here for some reason participants i can click yeah there's at least like 20 i think around i don't know 15 20 of you here um yeah thank you so much for 160 wait how are you seeing that i'm only seeing like 20 something hang on clicking on participations yeah i'm only seeing maybe like some people are not in the chat maybe some people are just watching but yeah that's cool, 162. Thank you for letting me know. I, I'm not seeing here. How, oh, yeah, sorry. I see it now. It's on the top uh, hand corner, and some, some of you guys liked it. And by the way, I have one request, you guys. So uh, when you watch my regular videos, uh, I would love for you guys to take a few seconds, if you can, to hit the like button and to comment on the videos. I always reply with another comment because one comment means like one level up for the algorithm and my, when i reply you guys it's two comments so the more comments we have the the more youtube uh will recommend my videos to other plant lovers because sometimes these some of my videos doesn't even show up on the subscribers feed anymore uh, there have been a lot of different like viral contents i don't know if you look if you're looking at youtube now there's a lot of like really crazy viral contents you know about the war about everything and my content tend to be more like low key so not many people click on them and youtube doesn't recommend it to too many people so it really really helped me out when you hit the like button and, and comment um so that other people can discover the channel and and stuff but this is a little request i guess i'm gonna let you guys go now yeah i'm gonna enjoy the rest of the sunday is only morning so um for those of you tuning in from you know any sunday have a nice sunday ahead for those of you who are uh, from the U.S. or Hawaii. Well, Hawaii is the U.S. What am I talking about? If <laughs> you guys in the U.S., have a good night and happy growing. I will, I will do more of these. I will. So thank you again. This is building my confidence in doing more live streams. Bye-bye. Okay, how do I close this? How do I close this? Okay.